Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Tech goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. You're busy. You expect to say no sometimes. But what you didn't expect was a chance to say yes to a college degree while keeping your life. Indiana Tech is now offering Chicago area students undergraduate and graduate degree opportunities taught online by experienced faculty who care. Learn more at one of the new Indiana Tech enrollment centers in Naperville or Wilmette. I can turn this in early? Sure, whenever you're ready. Embrace the unexpected at Indiana Tech. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that there aren't very many energy programs out there. When I researched all of the various programs recently, there are really only two or three accredited engineering programs. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada originally. I came out here to Indiana Tech uh, to actually go for the energy engineering program because of its uniqueness and its ability to get hands-on with the materials I'm going to be using in the future. Well, a few of the things I think that sets Indiana Tech apart is, number one, you have very small classes. Uh, you have very close relationships with your professors. When you have a class of 10 people, it's much easier to get to know the professor and get in contact with him than if you have a class of 30, 40, or 50. You're going to have the same professors for the majority of your classes. You're going to have the same classmates for the majority of your classes. The more practical applications come in all the subsequent energy engineering classes. He transfers in a class that right after they're leaving the classroom and the board is filled with calculus. So in order to understand a lot of these topics, they're going to need to understand the calculus there. Calculus is the study of the, the rate of change, how fast things change, and depending upon whether it's energy engineering, industrial engineering, or whatever, they're going to need to use that and apply that. Professor Romary, um, he stands out to me the most right now because when I first got here, I had to take calculus, Calc 1, Calc 2, and he's the one of the professors that teaches it, and he just really was a very kind and helpful helpful guy and he did whatever he could to help us out. He was very funny, always had a way of creatively teaching calculus to us that not a whole lot of people can do. And I think that and how he did it was all, this is going to be something that's going to stick for me for a very long time. The field work that Indiana Tech can provide here is, for example, we have a 10 kilowatt windmill that the students can work with. Uh, we have a geothermal system uh, for a couple of the buildings for Yuteng Su and for Zollner uh, that uses geothermal principles to heat and cool the buildings in the summer and the winter. The PV array system, training system that we have down here in the basement allows us to wire up the panels we have down in the basement to set it up as an off-the-grid system or a battery bank system, which helps us because we can see every component of the system actually intertwining and how they work together with something that may not be easily visible when you're on the job site in, in a career. So definitely my uh, internship at Super Value Incorporated uh, was a very, very beneficial uh, program for me to be in. 
It was more based on the process and logistical side of engineering of, the, of my degree, not necessarily the design aspect. It helped me really learn how the most efficient way to do a, to do a task and some of the uh, boundaries that come with trying to make things more efficient. One of the things that we've been very fortunate here at Indiana Tech is that we've had a grant through AEP to help subsidize our students in taking some of the various trips in spring break. Over the last four years, I have taken, along with a couple of other chaperones, I've taken almost a couple of dozen students to a trip to Germany and Switzerland that focused on renewable energy. Uh, we've gone to Iceland last year, uh, focusing on geothermal energy, and we just recently returned from a trip to Costa Rica. Just last year, I went to Iceland with a couple of, of our peers, not even just energy engineers, but a couple of other uh, engineering majors went along with us. And for me, that was the highlight of my, of my college time. I mean, we learned a lot about like geothermal systems and how they converted to a country of basically like ran just by geothermal. And, but it wasn't just learning about that, it was also learning about their culture as well, you know, and the past and the history and where they plan to go in their future. And all those things combined, I think, really, really kind of defines my experience here in Indiana Tech. You can be the smartest engineer in the world, but if you cannot talk to or work with other engineers and non-engineers, it's very hard to get anything done. I try to teach my students that while you may not like writing, it's going to be a part of the job. You have to communicate if you're doing experiments or uh, testing hardware in the lab. You need to write it up so that other people know what you did and the customer may want to know how, what are the results of that test. Something I would remember most about the faculty would be just the one-on-one -on -one aspect of it and how open they are to hearing your problems and concerns and willing to assist you. Uh, India, Indiana Tech, with the class sizes being so small, you really get that one-on-one -on -one talking, uh, everyday type relationship with your advisors and your professors. And having that is key to success, I feel, because being able to communicate with them and actually get your problems and questions across is going to help clarify things for you while you're in, in classes in school, which is going to set you up for success. Welcome to the Summit City. Home to the 260s dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. What's possible at Indiana Tech? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. On the edge of downtown Fort Wayne, Indiana, this is Indiana Tech men's volleyball on SummitCitySports.com. The Indiana Tech Warriors with a 20-4 and overall record, 11-3 in the WAC this season, playing host to the Siena Heights Saints, who come in a game above 500 overall on the year and 8-5 and 
in the conference slate so far this season. Jaron Matheny for SummitCitySports.com. Glad you are with us as we get set for another weekend with two matches for Indiana Tech here on the home floor. Second out of three consecutive weekends for Indiana Tech with matches on Friday and Saturday. Last weekend, Tech falling on Friday night in five sets in what was a brilliant match played on both sides cornerstone getting the best of indiana tech in five sets three to two warriors bounce back with a straight set victory over aquinas this past saturday march 30th to get the overall mark to 20 and 4 and 11 and 3 in the conference indiana tech and sienna heights meeting for what will be the second time and potentially final time this season final time during the regular season certainly but postseason on the horizon for both these teams in the conference tournament. Indiana Tech, a four-set win at Siena Heights. Match played uh, in Adrian, Michigan. Helped Indiana Tech get out to a 6-0 start on the year. Uh, this was back on February 16th. Warriors were led in the attacking total by Mason Milan, who had nine kills on 15 swings, hitting 467 for the match. Indiana Tech also got nine kills from Dante Stewart. He had swung his arm a couple more times. 31 total attacks for Stewart in the four-set win at Siena Heights uh, earlier in February. The Saints were led offensively by Daniel Rua, who had 10 kills and 21 total attacks, five errors for Rua. Try to get some more production in the swinging today in the hitting category. .009, just above and just into the positives for the overall hitting numbers for Siena Heights. The first time these two sides faced off, Indiana Tech hit 265 at Siena Heights, again, back on February 16th. To get the win, four-set win, help Tech get to 6-0 and on the season, drop the next match at Lawrence Tech, which... Uh, by virtue of a forfeiture has become a win for Indiana Tech. So truly started the year 6-1, and one, but if you look at the full slate of things, Indiana Tech didn't technically lose a match until March 15th. Uh, that was at number 11, St. Xavier in Chicago. And now the Warriors trying to extend a winning streak to back-to-back -to -back matches with Lawrence Tech coming to town tomorrow at 3 p.m. Four regular season matches remain for the Warriors after tonight. Lawrence Tech tomorrow at Goshen on Tuesday against Warner out of Florida in a non-conference matchup on Friday of next week. And then next Saturday, number 13, Lords will be here inside the Schaefer Center to take on Indiana Tech to cap off the regular season in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. Four conference games remaining coming into today for Indiana Tech. Here are your men's volleyball standings in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. Lords at the top, followed by Cornerstone, Indiana Tech, and Mount Vernon Nazarene. Uh, Indiana Tech should have a receiving votes next to their name, dropped outside of the top 15, but still receiving votes alongside Cornerstone and Mount Vernon Nazarene. Siena Heights at number five can potentially climb to a tie for fourth with a win this evening. Goshen at number six, Lawrence Tech dropping down to seven, despite, I mean, they've played a really good season so far, but ineligibility and, and those sort of things, you get a forfeiture and and your overall mark changes quite drastically, but still that'll be a dangerous Lawrence Tech team uh, going forward, especially if they're a seven seed heading into the conference tournament. And then Bethel at number eight, eight and 12 overall, and three and 10 in the conference this year. Indiana Tech taking on Siena Heights. The Warriors trying to win back-to-back -back matches here on the home floor. Siena Heights with that eight and five conference mark on the year trying to win once again, this time on the road. Six and three on the road this season for Siena Heights coming into match play tonight. They won their last time out on Tuesday of last week against Aquinas at home. For Siena Heights, it's here at the Schaefer Center tonight at Lords tomorrow and at Cornerstone on Tuesday of next week before two home matches to round out the regular season in Adrian as they'll host Goshen and Bethel next Friday and Saturday. The all-time series history between these two teams. Of course, men's volleyball at the NAIA level is very new, but Indiana Tech 8-2 and all-time against Siena Heights with eight consecutive victories in this series. 4-0 inside the Schaefer Center coming in to match play 
this evening. We'll have men's volleyball coming up after this break. We'll have the anthem and then get you back for your starting rotations. It's Indiana Tech men's volleyball on SummitCitySports.com. Before we get into all the action, let's take a tour around the Indiana Tech campus and show what Tech can offer you. Hi, I'm Paxton and I'll be your tour guide today. Behind me we have Pearson Hall. This is one of our freshman dorms on campus. Today I'll be showing you dorm rooms. Come inside. And the only way to get into campus is if you have an ID card, so you'll have to like swipe into all the dorms. And then over here we have an intercom system. So through every dorm we have these like dial buttons within the dorm rooms and then outside. So say you're visiting somebody, you don't live here, you would dial their room number and then you can actually call their room and they can unlock the doors to the dorm through the intercom system and you can talk to them, they can see you through a camera and they can unlock the doors for you so they don't have to leave the room. It's really nice to have. So right here we just have our main lobby. Um, every floor has a lobby. In, in the lobbies we just have like TVs and stuff. You can watch movies, play video games. You can hang out with friends, do homework, play card games. Um, it's just a nice little hangout area to have. Um, and then right here, this is what we call our RA office. So every single night there will be an RA in the office. They're just there for your needs if you have any issues with like toilets or sinks or anything being clogged. They'll always be in there for your help. Um, if you have questions about anything, you can always come see an RA here. Um, and then over here, we have mailboxes. Every student has a mailbox. They are really small. The only thing they can fit is like card-sized items. Throughout campus, you'll see our mail room when you go on your actual tour later on, and that will be in one of our other buildings where you'll receive bigger packages. All right, so here's the laundry room. So in the laundry room, you don't have to save quarters or use quarters. I know it says 25 cents, but it is included with living on campus. And then there's one on every floor and every side of the floor, so there's two on every floor in Pearson. So every student has keys to their dorm. And then as you come in, um, you will see our intercom system right here that I talked about in the entranceway. So this is where you would like unlock the door for visitors, talk to them. Um, and then one really nice thing about it is there is a security guard button right there. So if you were to have somebody like calling your room constantly at like 5 o'clock in the morning because some student forgot their keys, you could actually press the security guard button and it will lock them in that little box that we entered to into the dorm. It'll lock both the outside doors and the inside doors and call security. So it also has a nice safety measure through within your room. You don't even have to leave your room for that. So that's really nice. And then as we enter in this way, you'll see our, this is the half of our room looks like. So there's this, and then on the other side of the suite, there's a mirrored room that looks exactly like this. Um, the desk, the dressers, and the closets, and all of the drawers and stuff all come with. Um, you can decorate it any way you'd like. And then like mini fridges, TVs, anything like that, you would bring here. And then through here, we have our bathroom. So then as we come into the bathroom, you'll see that this side of the room has their own sink and toilet. And then as you come through, there's one shower shared between the two rooms. And then this side of the room has their own sink and toilet. And then there's the mirrored room right here. So then they share a little common space out there. And then this is the exact same stuff. And it's all the same. Here we have Cal Flush. This is our other freshman dorm on campus. It is across the street from main campus. We'll be showing another freshman dorm, the laundry room, and then the hangout lobby area. Come on in. So same thing as Pearson. Um, to get into the dorms, you have to have a swipe card that unlocks and lets you in. All right, and then we have the same intercom system as we do in Pearson, and it runs throughout all of the dorms. And then in here is the lobby area where all the students hang out. We have like a TV so people can hook up like Xboxes or anything like that, DVD players, you can watch movies. I know RAs put on a bunch of activities down here. They do like movie nights um, with hot chocolate during the winter. We done, we've done like pumpkin carving and we watch a Halloween movie. Um, and so that's all done down here. And then it's the same thing over here. You can do some studying, you can hang out with friends, you can eat dinner if you want. And then, like I said, you can hang out with your RA, hang out with your friends, do homework, but follow me to the next part. So same thing as Pearson, every student has keys to their dorm. 
So when you first walk in, it's different than Pearson where there's no like two mirrored room. It's just one room with two students. The shelves, the desks, the drawers, all of the bed, like the beds and stuff all come with. Um, and then over here, it's the same for Pearson and Calb Flesh. You can control the air condition and the heat for the room, not the entire dorm, which is so nice because then it's between you and your roommate, not through hundreds of people in one building. <laughs> and then as we walk over here, you'll see that the sink is outside of the bathroom, which is so nice because obviously if your roommate's showering, you don't have to worry about not being able to brush your teeth or even use the sink or get a drink of water or anything like that. And then as we walk over here, um, you'll see only two roommates to one bathroom. And then the shelving space. And then instead of Pearson where they have uh, closets, you would have this whole shelving space and hangar area. And then same thing as Pearson, we have the intercom system over here where you can press the security guard button, you can talk to them and then see them through the camera. Calflush also has mailboxes, they're the same size, they fit card sized items and again if you have any bigger packages we do have a mail room on campus. So then through here this is the laundry room. The difference between Pearson and Calflush is Calflush there's only one in the whole building and it's on the first floor whereas Pearson has them on every floor. Um, but it is the same as they are included with living here so you don't have to use quarters. It's free to the students. And that concludes the tour. Thanks for coming with. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to your counselor. Hope to see you around campus. Go Warriors! We welcome you back to the Schaefer Center, SummitCitySports.com, getting ready for the introductions for Indiana Tech. Before we meet the starting rotation for the Warriors, your starters for Siena Heights, a senior opposite at six foot five from Carmel, Indiana. Number seven, Jacob Pickett. Zach Tucker is a junior setter from Virginia. Rasai Bailey, a middle blocker out of Columbus, Ohio. Jonathan Stavring, freshman opposite from Denmark. Daniel Rua is a freshman outside hitter from Columbia. And Mark Arsenault, a senior outside from Plainfield, Illinois. Parker Sines is the head coach for Siena Heights. Let's meet your starters for Indiana Tech. your starters for Indiana Tech head coach Jordan Rosenberg in his first season at the helm for the Warriors it's Stuart Capo Carico as well as Dosange Rosno and Demoulin who make up that starting rotation for Indiana Tech Warriors at 20 and 4 on the season 11 and 3 in the WAC Siena Heights 8 and 5 in the WAC 11 and 10 overall Warriors dropping outside of the top 15 and into the receiving votes category in the latest top 15 poll, which came out on Wednesday of this week. Currently, Lords is the only team in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference that is ranked inside the top 15, but Cornerstone, Indiana Tech, and Mount Vernon Nazarene all receiving votes. As is tradition here for Indiana Tech, Mason Milan and the reigning NAIA Player of the Week, Raekwon Rogers, will go through their pregame rituals. Indiana 
Atlanta Tech ready to roll. And we are ready to roll from the Schaefer Center, SummitCitySports.com. Glad to be with you. Raekwon Rogers, Defender of the Week in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. And Indiana Tech, in terms of those overall awards for Player of the Week, hasn't been inside uh, really all season long. Been a lot of guys from Lords, and obviously understand why That's the way the Great Wolves have played this season as we are ready to go. Clayton Wheatley serves. We're underway from the Schaefer Center. Tucker setting to the outside. Assange is there with the blockers. Tucker again setting outside. Left-handed tap and down for Mark Arsenault. And Sienna Heights scores the first point. One to nothing Saints. And that'll send Zach Tucker back to serve. Junior setter six foot five in height. Chesapeake, Virginia native. 48 aces on the year for Tucker. That's a team high to go along with his team high 721 assists. Store angles to Dosange, gets it back. High up in the air. Tucker on the back set. Against the block and good. First swing for Jonathan Stavring is through. 2-0 start for Sienna Heights. And took four sets for Indiana Tech to get a win at Siena Heights back on February 16th. At Carrico, Dosange set to Moulin, couldn't put it away. Set coming from Pickett this time, ball up in the air. Stewart. And a free ball. Dosange on the joust. Long rally continues. Dosange, Demoulin has to contort his body, swung with too much velocity. And it's 3-0 Siena Heights. Another good jump serve from Tucker. Stewart lines up, delivers, and Indiana Tech is on the board with Dante Stewart's first kill. 245 of them coming into play on this Friday night. Dosange down the line, strong serve. Armando Sanj an ace. First ace of the evening, Dosange delivers for Indiana Tech. Again, jump serve down the line. Tucker right at the net line. Quick set, picket kill. The Indiana kid back in his home state and his first kill of the evening. Much better start for Siena Heights here when you talk about the overall attack percentage. Uh, just in the positives, .009, the first meeting. Mason Milan's first swing. DeMoulin bats it down, ball's alive. Pushed up by Rosno, Dosange, back set. Stewart against two blockers, make it three, comes back to Tech. And ends up in a net violation and a point for Sienna Heights. Five to two, Saints in front. The first time Mark Arsenal, who had the opening kill, serves. Going back to Stewart, who had the first touch. His second kill point, Indiana Tech. Warriors, as I mentioned in our pregame show, second of three weekends in a row where they'll play Friday and Saturday matches here at the Schaefer Center. Trying to improve their standing in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference postseason tournament. High toss, Stewart, good. Line drive, serve, nearly an ace. And an error on the swing over from the libero, Jackson Kisner. 
And it is back to a one point deficit for Indiana Tech. NAI men's volleyball, the Masters out of California received all 15 first place votes this week. Vanguard second, followed by Ottawa University in Arizona. Batted back down, and there again is Pickett. His second kill, six to four. Sienna Heights in front. William Penn at number four, and Grandview at number five. Menlo in California at six. St. Xavier out of Illinois at seven. Then Missouri Baptist eight. Jamestown in North Dakota. They've won the GPAC once again, and have so every year of men's volleyball. Rose no cross court kill attempt pushed up. Walkers there, including Milan. Scramble for a free ball. Dosanj for Stewart. Pops out of the sky. First touch comes back. Milan on the shove. Didn't clear. Make it 7-4. As I was mentioning, Jamestown at number 9. Georgetown number 10. And then Missouri Valley, Park, Lords, Benedictine, Mesa, and Mount Mercy make out the rest of the top 15. Service error in the first one tonight. Benedictine Mesa in action today. One in straight sets over Pacific Union in California. Cornerstone is back in Indiana today, taking on Calumet. And an ace. Carrico steps on the back line. First serve is a beauty, and the second ace for Indiana Tech. St. Mary of the Woods is at Bethel. Goshen hosting Mount Vernon Nazarene and Lords playing host to Lawrence Tech. That's the whack play for today. Another ace for Carrico. Three aces to start for Indiana Tech. We are knotted up at seven. Despite the Warriors hitting in the negatives right now. Negative point oh seven one. And this time just didn't get over the tape for Carrico, but a couple of nice serves. First error for Indiana Tech in the serving department. Jonathan Stavring, his first time serving for Sienna Heights. Good back and forth in the opening game. Went through the hands of Stewart. Long run for Carrico, and Dosanjh able to just tap over. Tucker for the attack. Swings wide from Bailey. Indiana Tech point off the attack air. It is eight all. Mason Milan comes off the floor. And you can tell with Mason, and, and I'm sure Dante Stewart too, too but it, Stewart doesn't come off the floor. So it's a little bit different from that perspective. Tucker back setting. Nice extension from Capo to keep it up. And this time, the swing is true for Bailey. Sienna Heights back in front, 9-8. to eight. But you see Mason Milan come off the floor, and all that experience for Mason, you just see it when he's talking to guys on the bench or talking with Coach Rosenberg. Feels like they've got a really good connection on what they want to do and seem to be on the same page, and you need those type of leaders on your team. Joust, that was kicked by Rodgers to keep it alive. Won't matter in the end, but a kick save and a beauty from Raekwon Rogers. See if we can take another look at that here on our replay. Green shoes on the right side of your screen. Here's the touch on the way back over, and a right foot kept that ball alive. Eventually, Sienna Heights grabs the point. Dosange for Ben Rosno. A little bit of a knuckleball holds true. Ten to nine. No cross court serve is out. Point Sienna Heights. Yvonne Yoon in for the first time, and he'll drop back and serve for the Saints. Oh. 
Yoon, freshman listed as a middle blocker at six foot two, hails from Washington. Washington State, not the District of Columbia. To the outside, blockers there, and now sliding back for Indiana Tech. Near side swing, and another kill for Jonathan Stavring. Good start for Siena Heights here tonight at the Schaefer Center, 12 to nine in the opening game. Stavring and Pickett, as well as Arsenal, all with two kills. Dante Stewart leading Tech with his two terminations. Dosange for Raekwon Rogers. Ball coming back over, cleared just beyond the far line. And Indiana Tech going to be grateful there that wasn't sure. I didn't see Campo or Kiriko, whoever reached out, didn't graze that ball, thankfully, for Tech fans. And it's back to a two-point difference. Tucker going out wide, pancake, and a free ball clears. Won't matter. Jacob Pickett, third kill. Love the effort, though, from Indiana Tech. Keep that ball alive, and a nice pancake saved it. We've had a couple of nice defensive plays for Tech that haven't ended up resulting in points. And credits the Saints for that being the case. And head coach Parker signs in his first season at the helm for Siena Heights. Corey Ness joins him on the bench. Back to the start of our serving rotation, Zach Tucker. Stewart, can't stop that. When he gets that high up above the net, that elevation, you're not gonna slow him down. It's just part of the Dante Stewart experience. A little extra pop. Service error and a mistake Tech would like to have back 14 to 11. Those are the mistakes when you've got a set score like we do currently. Like to have back. Dosange, quick set, and the Moulin takes care of the rest. Dante Stewart surpassing 1,400 kills in his Indiana Tech career in the last match out. Tucker set, and that was an easy block there. Tucker bats himself on the chest. He knew it wasn't a good spot for him to put that ball right up against where a couple of blockers were for Indiana Tech. Really good match so far, 14-13. High toss, Stewart on the drop. Tucker setting for a shove by Arsenal. Rosno over the top. Blockers, Milan into Moulin. We are tied at 14. Again, Jerry Matheny here for SummitCitySports.com. Glad you're with us. Josh Butts running our camera here tonight. So we'll both be here tomorrow for that 3 p.m. matchup against Lawrence Tech. Soft touch. Rosno, Alex got to it. Now Ben on the swing. And that's stuck on Rose Nose's hands on the way over. Another kill for Siena Heights and another one for Stavring. 15-14. Mylan up in the air. Mason Mylan. 30 points into game one. We are split down the middle, 15 apiece.
An ace again for Jacob Carrico. And four aces in this opening set. Carrico has been on fire. He's got three of them. Quick set from Tucker. Stavring rejected. Rosno and Rogers in combo. Timeout. Sienna Heights. 17-15 opening set. Indiana Tech on top. SummitCitySports.com. We'll be back in a minute and 10 seconds. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies and it's just really important to get involved on campus. You have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on like festivals, I walk a bunch of the trails here locally, there's great restaurants, there's always something fun to do. You can never be bored here in Fort Wayne. The school spirit at Indiana Tech is epic, it's everything. We had our first annual hockey game not too long ago. Everybody showed up, face paint, cowbells, Trojan hats, lawn gnomes, it was amazing. It makes it so worthwhile to be a warrior. Go Warriors. Seventeen fifteen, Indiana Tech leading Sienna Heights in the opening set of action from the Schaefer Center. SummitCitySports.com. I'm Jerry Matheny. Glad you are with us. Going to be a little bit of a tough time here. Cameraman just had to dash away for a second, so he'll be back momentarily. Stick with me as I'll run the camera, keep the scores, and give you all the play-by-play -play details. Service error by Carrico. And it's back to a one-point difference in this opening set. Jonathan Stavring. And his serve is too long. They trade service errors as Indiana Tech holds on to a two-point lead in set one. Really good start for Sienna Heights out of the gate. Warriors have been able to respond, thanks in large part, Jacob Carrico and his three aces here in set one. Capo kept it up, just taps over. Tucker, and another opportunity does not go by the wayside for Daniel Rua. Baza for the first time and too strong. So service mistakes, part of the story in the late stages of this first set. Indiana Tech trying to avoid those errors currently. Ben Rosno serving. Rogers winds up in the windmill for a kill. Three point separation now for Indiana Tech. Back set, Stavring, too tall, no touch, point tech. Twenty-one seventeen, And again, it's Rosno serving in the midst of a 3-0 spurt for Indiana Tech. Sienna Heights calling that out. And indeed it was. Again, service mistakes, part of the story. Do have what looks to be a high school boys volleyball team in attendance 
On the far side of your screen, just to the right, blue makes me think it's Carroll, but I cannot confirm that. The freshman, Yoon. Stewart, Yoon skies it, coming back over. Rosno to Dosanj. Rogers finds the opening. 22-18. Rodgers and Wheatley cross paths. Still a timeout remaining here for Sienna Heights, but at this point, I think the Saints may hold on to the timeout. It doesn't carry over, obviously, but unless they're going to chip away at this lead, potentially save it for points 23 and 24. Left-handed bat doesn't make it over against the blockers. Three of them there now for Indiana Tech. And then dumped in by Pickett as it came over the top of the tape. Pickett, fourth kill for him on five swings, does have one air. Solid serve, Dosanj spins it behind. Beautiful, beautiful play from Armand Dosanj on the set. Saw him inside the Tech Top 10 plays. Came out earlier this week. Go back and watch that here on our YouTube channel. Good low line drive serve. Alex Rose no setting, Stewart. Tapped it off the blockers. Set point in the first upcoming for Indiana Tech. Set point number one for the Warriors, Armand Dosage. Service air. Six. Ayers serving in this opening set, but four aces for Indiana Tech. Set point two, and a service air gets the first set to Indiana Tech. Warriors take set one, 25 to 20 over Sienna Heights. We'll switch sides and come back with set two action from the Schaefer Center. Indiana Tech hitting 250 compared to 143 for Sienna Heights. And it's the Warriors up one set to none as we head into set two. SummitCitySports.com, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just under three minutes with second set action from the Schaefer Center. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260s dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our cameras. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. 
I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies, and it's just really important to get involved on campus. You have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on like festivals. I walk a bunch of the trails here locally. There's great restaurants. There's always something fun to do. You can never be bored here in Fort Wayne. The school spirit at Indiana Tech is epic. It's everything. We had our first annual hockey game not too long ago. Everybody showed up, face paint, cowbells, Trojan hats, lawn gnomes. It was amazing. It makes it so worthwhile to be a warrior. Go Warriors. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. The fourth service error of set one for Siena Heights provides an opening set victory for Indiana Tech, 25 to 20 in game one. Jaron Matheny for SummitCitySports.com. Glad you're with us. Josh Butts is running our camera here today. Four kills for Dante Stewart. Raekwon Rogers, three kills of his own on just five swings. No errors for either Rogers or Stewart in the opening set. In fact, Indiana Tech just three errors in the hitting department. Six errors serving, but four aces. No aces in set one for Siena Heights. Four kills for Pickett, three for Stavring, and two for Arsenal. Set two. Zach Tucker gets us started. Sienna Heights got off to a good start in that first set. We hit about the midway point. It was 15-15, and Tech able to pull away from there. Rosno sent back. Dosan scramble and a two-hand push. Stavring snuck it in against the blockers, and Sienna Heights once again strikes first, this time in game two. Sanj going to Dante Stewart. Near side tap, and we've got contact with the net. It's against Indiana Tech on that violation. Warrior bench continues to be into it. An error from Tucker. And that'll bring Clayton Wheatley on and up to serve for Indiana Tech. Line swing dug out by Ben Rosno. And this touch coming back to Indiana Tech. Got to capitalize. Capo, too strong. Not a bad swing by any means coming out of that back line and three meter line, but too much juice from Capo. Mark Arsenal. Mullen down the middle, comes back. Going out, Dante Stewart beat the blockers to it. And this touch is good for an Indiana Tech point. Dante Stewart, fifth kill. Armando Sanj had an ace in the first. Come back to Rua. This is a good dive from Alex Rose. No. 
And that pushed off the block for Stavring. Jacob Pickett, senior out of Carmel, back in his home state. And setting here. That goes off the arms of Kiriko and out five to two, Siena Heights. And back to that first set, Siena Heights Led it five to two and seven to four, as well as 13 to 10 before the Warriors were able to mount some success, including a 3 0 run that got it back to 14 all, another 3 0 run that gave them a two point advantage, and another 3 0 run late that put Tech up by four. Five kills for Dante Stewart as well as Stavring to lead all attackers. Off speed and off line, attack air, point tech off the swing from Bailey. serve from Stewart, ping pongs around, and it's an Indiana Tech point, double contact, the call from our head official. We're talking about 3-0 runs, there's one. Head referee with the call, and this one hits the candy stripe right in front of him, and it's a 4-0 run for Indiana Tech. Stewart serves once more as they try to fix the antenna. Directly in front of the head referee. Looks good to go. Line judge confirms that's in the right spot. Tucker, long run, set himself up for Rua. That block is out. And it's an Indiana Tech, no, Siena Heights point. Warriors certainly thought that one landed in play. It is out. Milan almost credited with the block. <laughs> Good angle from Dosange. Gets it to Ben Rosno. Impressive set from Armando Sange. Angle his body takes here in the middle, keep himself off the net, and still deliver a good ball to Rosno. Jacob Carrico, three aces in set one. Couldn't kiss the back line, it's an error. And once again, we're even. Stewart, quick set from Dosange. Dante Stewart pumps his fist on his sixth kill. Eight to seven, Indiana Tech. Warriors hitting at 238 for the match, 200 in this set. 182 in game two here for Siena Heights. Capo, a little loft on this serve. Punched by Tucker and it is down for a Saints point. 
Sienna Heights, four and seven at home this season. One and zero in neutral site contest, and six and three on the road. Three consecutive road matchups against teams either inside the top 15 or receiving votes. Tonight against Tech, tomorrow at Lords, number 13, and then receiving votes, Cornerstone will host on Tuesday. Rose, no, too far, no touch. Yvonne Yoon. Stewart got down, digs it out, sets up Dosange to go to Raekwon Rogers. Middle blockers feeling it, his fourth kill. Six swings in total for Rogers, no errors. 667 in the hit percentage. Ben Rose now looking for one of those 3 0 spurts here. Got it up, joust, back over. Ball pings around and eventually it's another Siena Heights point. Rogers winds up the windmill and delivers his fifth kill. Raquan Rogers, senior on a Black Lick, Ohio, six foot five for the middle blocker. Makes it really tough on all the attackers in this conference. Wheatley service error and Giving away some points here for Indiana Tech at the line. Capo got down, digs it out. Stewart up in the air. Back and forth we go. Dante Stewart the point. A lot of depth on this Indiana Tech roster, and we've seen pretty much everybody that's listed on the roster at some point this season. Window found, and Daniel Rua, another point for Siena Heights. Depth has been depleted a little bit as this season has progressed due to injuries. Service error. And we're back to 12 apiece. One of those sets right now where, yeah, 3-0 run can mean the world, but using your timeouts as a coach is going to be a little bit more important when you call timeout, try to keep momentum or flip momentum. Tucker, one hand on the set. And that went through the hands of Dante Stewart on the back line. 13 to 12, Siena Heights. Stavring, just a freshman. He's been impressive so far this evening. Milan against two blockers, see who they come back to. It's Rua who's rejected on the left-hand swap. Milan the blocker. Carico. Tucker went behind his head on touch two. Dosange for Milan down the line with the touch. Tech grabs the lead.
Carrico lines up. His serve's been on point. And again, creating some havoc. Rua. Oh, Stewart kept it up. Back line. And pure Arsenal. Rua, high toss and too strong, and Indiana Tech, the first team to 15 in the second set. Milan checks out and trying to give a little bit of energy back to the bench. Not a great first touch. Arsenal. Now Dosange back for Capo, and good. Tucker and Stavring miscommunication on who was getting that ball. Split the difference, and Indiana Tech up two. Awkward angle for Bailey. Second attempt is good, just was waiting. Indiana Tech did not seem to like that call on where that ball landed, but it was ruled in favor by both the line judge and our head referee. Tucker going out wide for Arsenal. And we're back even, 16 all, back-to-back -back points for Siena Heights. Yoon, some loft on that serve, Dante Stewart. 17-16, I love the loft serve. I love when you go a little bit off speed and throw teams off balance, but that right there is, is sometimes what you see when you go off speed. Eighth kill for Dante. Arsenal against the blockers, three of them in total. Still fits it through. Sienna Heights, 348 hitting percentage compared to 286 for Indiana Tech in set two. Both teams hitting above 200 for the match. Joust opportunity. Saints looking for Arsenal. Kept it inside the antenna. Stewart. One on two, got it over the blockers. Good set from Dosan. Stewart, nine kills. on that back set. Wheatley gonna go here for Stewart. And it's down. Coach Sign steps out, both him and Coach Rosenberg with a pair of timeouts remaining. Coach Rosenberg giving some instructions after that point, Clayton Wheatley. Service error, 19-18. Wheatley's second service error this evening. Got credit for that assist, though. His first on the night. DeMoulin swiping down. And Dante Stewart collects the block.
One nothing match advantage, 20 to 18, set two. And it's Armando Sanj. Down the middle, quick one-two punch here. Hasn't been a lot of rally opportunities for either team as we've continued through this second set. Jacob Kisner. Not a great first touch. Milan still lining it up. Swings down and straight down the line off the fingertips of Mason Milan. Crucial point here. Good touch by the blockers, slowed that down. Milan hit the antenna with the right hand. Alex Rosno comes off after a good touch. Jacob Carrico back in. Service air from Stavring. And the door is open here for Indiana Tech. Just feels like a huge point upcoming. Carrico, three aces, three errors so far. Off the tape. Just got it over. Rogers called for it, dug out. Rua's rejected, Milan and Raekwon Rogers. Bottom of your screen, there's the slide over and the defenders to the rest. Mason Milan and Raekwon Rogers and Armando Sanj feeling the brute force of Milan afterwards. Carrico too much. Twenty-three, twenty-one. Daniel Rua. Dosan does get the set opportunity for Rosno, looking for a touch, no avail. Back to back for Siena Heights and a chance to tie it again for the Saints. Two pretty evenly matched teams here today at the Schaefer Center. Mason Milan splits the back row. Set point for Indiana Tech, trying to take a 2-0 match lead. Fran Baza out of Barcelona. In to try and slow down the serve of Mario Capo. Set point one for Tech. Arsenal off the block and out. Point Sienna Heights, set point two upcoming. And Indiana Tech going to take a timeout, talk things over before set point two. Looking at overtime potentially in this second set. 24-23, Tech in front. We'll be back to the Schaefer Center in one minute. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit 
Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Set point two for Indiana Tech in game two. Sienna Heights serving, it's Yvonne Yoon trying to send it to OT. Rogers, set point and a win for Indiana Tech. Two nothing match lead for the Warriors as we head into the third set from the Schaefer Center. SummitCitySports.com, Indiana Tech hitting 290 in set two en route to a two to nothing advantage over the Saints. Warriors looking to sweep when we come back to the Schaefer Center. SummitCitySports.com. It's really important for freshmen to realize you get out of college what you put into it. If you dedicate yourself to your classes and to your projects and to what you're doing in college, you're going to have a really great experience here. I wish someone would have told me my freshman year that it's important to prioritize, knowing what's important, what's not important, knowing what I need to do opposed to what I want to do. The two things that I think all freshmen should know is uh, buy a parking permit so you don't rack up a bunch of fines and tickets. And also uh, make sure you go to class because it seems like a good idea when you're skipping, but then it's not worth it in the end when you fail the test or don't turn in homework. As an international student, my advice for the freshmen is to not be afraid to make friends because your friends here will end up being your family away from home. Anything that you want to do, anything that you want to put on, anything that you want to showcase on campus, you can. There's always people around to help you do what you want to do here. Make sure that you always take time for yourself to make sure that you're okay. This college can be very overwhelming as far as like schoolwork and friends and sports and just like everyday life. Always just make sure that you get what you need to get done. It's important to have a relationship with your professors because you're, you become more personable with them. You start to engage in the material more. They can give you recommendations, especially once you get out of college. You definitely want to put them down as like references. And if you have a better personal relationship, it just makes the whole learning experience go smoothly. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Live from Indiana Tech, it's the Warriors with a two to nothing match advantage over Sienna Heights as we get ready for set three from the Schaefer Center. SummitCitySports.com, Jerry Matheny, glad you're with us. Indiana Tech, the set two win. 10 kills now for Dante Stewart. Raekwon Rogers with six kills, including the one that capped off set two. Mark Arsenal, seven kills, 19 swings, and one air. He's hitting 316. Five kills for Pickett, 571 hit percentage. Sienna Heights at 197 for the match, 270 for Indiana Tech. And it's the Warriors, and Armando Sanj serves as our third set's underway. Tech trying to sweep the Schaefer Center. And the first point. Rolls along the, the net line and out. Sienna Heights is in front. Other matches in the whack. Bethel 2-0 over the St. Mary of the Woods currently. Goshen 2-0 over Mount Vernon Nazarene at the moment. And Lawrence Tech on the verge of going up two sets to none at Lourdes. Over the top. Point Indiana Tech. 
Cornerstone got a four set win over Calumet. That is a final in a non conference match for the team that would be ranked number 16 currently. Tech would be at 17. Dante Stewart, an ace. Fifth ace of the match for Indiana Tech. Did not have an ace in that second set win. A bit of a drop shot attempt on that serve. And Indiana Tech, the beneficiary, three to one. set on that left side of the net. On the back line, Dante Stewart, another ace. And that'll lead to a change for Siena Heights as Fran Baza enters. See if Stewart's got a little bit more magic as we continue. Good start to set three for Indiana Tech. Four consecutive points currently. And this comes up short. Four to two in Fran Baza. Sanj, one-handed tap, did keep himself up. Off the block, off the antenna, good for a Siena Heights point. And back-to-back -back for the Saints here. Armando Sanj looks like he's okay. He ran into the post, at which our head referee is currently stationed. Service error. Five to three. As Baza the junior stay in the match and play on the back line. One handed set arsenal. Stewart in the air. Rogers calling for it all the way, and Dawson set him up. Clayton Wheatley, two sets to none. Tucker again having to go with one hand on a set. Mylan off the overpass. <laughs> oh my. Mason Mylan. Timeout for Siena Heights. Saints in a little bit of trouble in this third set. Two to none on the scoreboard in favor of Indiana Tech. And we'll be back to the Schaefer Center right after this. SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, 
pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. 2 nothing in the match, 7-3, to three, set three. First time out taken by Sienna Heights. Tucker on the back set, it's too strong off the swing from Stavring. Eight to three, Indiana Tech. Rose, no. Little hesitation, and the Hezzy Hay works back to back points for Tech out of the Siena Heights timeout. Five in a row for the Warriors currently. Wheatley into the net. Tech in search of its 21st victory this season. Again, still five regular season matches remain after tonight. Then we got conference postseason tournament, which starts on April 16th. Rodgers winds up again. He has been phenomenal, folks. Eight kills on 11 swings, 7-27. Rodgers and Stewart have combined for 18 kills off of 30 total attacks. No errors between the two. Crazy impressive. Warriors have already surpassed their win total from last year, 19 and 10 a season ago. Tucker sets out Arsenal and slid by Dante Stewart. For the Saints point. 29 wins in 2022. 17 wins in 21, and obviously 2021, 2020, don't have to explain a whole lot there. Uh, but this has been one of the better seasons in program history so far, trying to chase that 2022 total. Ben Rosno makes it 11 to five and some comfortable feeling inside the Schaefer Center right now for Indiana Tech. Warriors seven and one at home. And all seven victories have come in straight sets. Service error for Indiana Tech as we check the numbers. 13th error compared to six aces. 10 service errors, no aces still for Siena Heights. Tucker with 21 assists currently. Dosange has 26, looking for 27. Dante Stewart will get it to him. 11th kill for Dante. And still no errors when it comes to attacking for either number four or number one. Raekwon Rogers comes out. Jacob Carrico serves. Carrico and ace. Fourth ace for Jacob Carrico tonight and things starting to fall apart a little bit here for Sienna Heights as it was banquet night for somebody. Trying to decide if that's women's volleyball or yeah, it looks like women's volleyball making an appearance. Carrico another ace. And right now, Indiana Tech is feeling uber comfortable. Up by eight points. Final timeout taken by Sienna Heights. And we'll be back to the Schaefer Center after this. SummitCitySports.com. Tech goes by many names. Business. Fine art. Forensic science. 
Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. Fourteen to six, Indiana Tech leads Sienna Heights in set three, and a two nothing match advantage for the Warriors. Jared Matheny for SummitCitySports.com. Glad you're with us. Josh Butts is alongside, running on our camera. Indiana Tech will host Lawrence Tech tomorrow at three p.m. Don't miss out on that. Sienna Heights will be on the road at Lords tomorrow, who is reeling right now against Lawrence Tech. We'll get you an update in just a moment. Jacob Carico, line drive serve, just a missile. Tap down by Dante Store. It is all Indiana Tech in set three. Four consecutive points for the Warriors now. Second time they've gone on a 4-0 spurt in this set. And to do it out of a Siena Heights timeout makes it a little bit extra special. Dosanj coming to Stewart, shoved it off the blockers with two hands. It's a 5-0 Indiana Tech run. Carrico off the tape and another ace for Jacob Carrico. And all Coach Signs can do is throw his hands in the air. Sometimes it falls that way. Indiana Tech hitting 889 in this set. Eight kills, nine attempts. Carrico, his sixth ace, third of this set. We're still in the first rotation currently. And he does it again. Jacob Carrico. Unbelievable. Seven aces for Carrico. Nine, make it eight consecutive points. Dylan Poor is in for the first time. Mr. Syracuse is out there. Caden Baltimore as well. Syracuse gets to swing. And contact with the net against Indiana Tech. Point Saints. Albert Garbachik in for the Warriors. Yoon. Dosanj coming to Syracuse. Right down the line, and everybody's pumped up off the bench for Indiana Tech. Austin Runyard enters, and Bosley to come in as well for Dosanj, who had a really solid match for Indiana Tech tonight. 19-7 Warriors en route to their 21st win in 25 tries this season. Nice swing from Fran Baza. Is 
Zach Tucker. Good depth on that serve with a jump, but he just put it too far, 20 to eight, and it's five points to get for Indiana Tech. Doing back-to-back -back matches at home for the Warriors in what would be the eight and nine tries. No communication, Syracuse the ace. Four to go. Got him a little bit caught up in this match. I promise we'd get an update on that uh, Lawrence Tech Lords matchup. This is coming back to Indiana Tech here. Bosley lining up, Garbacek, but out. Currently at Lords, Lawrence Tech, two to nothing over the Gray Wolves. That is into set three, it's nine to eight. Currently Lords on top, but Lawrence Tech continuing to make a statement in the whack this season. Poor lines up, his first kill of the night. Ron Young Jr. to enter. A lot of guys on the bench getting involved in this match. Trying to check the bench right now. I think we're just two guys shy of everybody getting in. Poor off his fingertips. And that does find the back line. Keeps Sienna Heights alive. Stavring picks up the kill. Twenty-two to ten. Good extension there from Ron Young Jr. Poor, and a touch of the blockers. Free ball back over. Blockers, Raekwon Rogers. Been a phenomenal match for him and Dante Stewart. <laughs> Two points away from a sweep, Caden Baltimore. Another block for Raekwon Rogers. It's been his match. Match point, Indiana Tech. Harris was trying to be waved in. It'll be Baltimore who serves again. Match point number one. Tucker and will play at least a second match point. Match point two, Jonathan Stavring. Rogers, and that is blocked back point, Sienna Heights. Would have been kind of a fitting end to this match. Rogers with eight kills currently. Service error, and that'll take care of this match. A sweep of Siena Heights for Indiana Tech. Close through the first sets and domination in set three. Warriors improved to 21 and four on the season, 12 and three in the WAC this year as Siena Heights falls to 500, 11 and 11 overall, eight and six in the WAC. The Saints will be at Lords tomorrow. Indiana Tech will host Lawrence Tech at 3 p.m. tomorrow here inside the Schaefer Center. Hope to talk to you then. Some final stats: Indiana Tech hitting 312 for the match, 13 kills for Dante Stewart. Eight kills for Raekwon Rogers and another victory in straight sets at home for the Warriors. We'll talk to you tomorrow here for SummitCitySports.com. And for Josh Butts, I'm Jaron Matheny. See you then. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah. 
pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies, and it's just really important to get involved on campus. You have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on, like festivals. I walk a bunch of the trails here locally. There's great restaurants. There's always something fun to do. You can never be bored here in Fort Wayne. The school spirit at Indiana Tech is epic. It's everything. We had our first annual hockey game not too long ago. Everybody showed up, face paint, cowbells, Trojan hats, lawn gnomes. It was amazing. It makes it so worthwhile to be a warrior. Go Warriors. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior.